Good morning, everyone. You're with Tom from Ludicrous Feet. Thank you so much for joining us on Saturday Morning Live. Today is Saturday, the 11th of November, 2023. Uh, so nice of you to join us live this morning, wherever you are watching from. Uh, if you're watching from, if you're watching us live this morning, make sure you leave a comment uh, telling us where you're watching from. If you are watching us on replay, hello as well. Thanks for joining us and make sure you leave a comment. And hello to our viewers and listeners uh, listening to us on podcast as well in your vehicles or wherever you might be. Let's say good morning, as always, uh, to our regular guest, of course, uh, Riz from Carloop. Hello, Riz. How are you this morning? Yeah, Tom, going well. Good to be here. It's uh, lots to talk about today. It's like never slows down. Absolutely, Riz. Uh, so happy to be part of this industry that we can chat about EVs uh, and very exciting developments, as always. Uh, you know, we're only three days out from our last stream, and yet there's so much news has accumulated. So, yeah, looking forward to chatting. Uh, before we do so, I want to shout out to our sponsors, as always. Uh, we have Carloop. We have Warbox, we have EV, many thanks to our sponsors. And if you want some nice discount codes, check them out in our video description below, as always. Riz, yeah, as we said, so much to chat about. Uh, what I want to talk about first is, of course, uh, this story coming out of New Zealand. Uh, Tesla Model 3 Highlands, uh, the refresh Model 3 is now uh, seen on a carrier in uh, one, of our New one of New Zealand's highways. Oh, the Kiwis, the, the, they beat us again. It's, it, it's, it's, like, uh, it's like rugby. All Blacks <laughs> coming out. It, it happens to be this way. They got the Addo 3 first. Now they're getting the new Model 3 Highland. Anyway, kudos to them because um, I think their delivery estimate times were December to March, I think. So they're supposed to be getting them a little quicker. So these are the first of uh, those. Maybe they're just showroom cars and they're going to hang around for a month or so before the customer deliveries begin next month. Yep. Yeah, let's not even talk about the rugby, Riz, but uh, yeah, unfortunately, they have beaten us as well when it comes to uh, showing EVs, and uh, yeah, I can't help but feel like just a touch jealous about uh, about this, but that's okay. Uh, we shouldn't be too far behind. As you said, uh, deliveries were due for December, so yeah, that's only next month. Uh, our deliveries in Australia are from January to March 2024, so yeah, we shouldn't be too much further behind. Uh, we should be able to see these in our showrooms very soon, but nice to see uh, some photographs there of... Some Model 3s uh, sitting on a carrier on a highway in New Zealand there. Um, let's see. Uh, small photos there. There we go. Uh, is this from New Zealand that, as well? No, that, that's from Europe. Um, Europe. I was just talking about the, the wheels and how the hubcaps are a little bit different, the aero caps mm -hmm. on those. And we couldn't really see them properly on that photo in New Zealand because it doesn't have the caps on, on the vehicle sitting at the top of the carrier. Uh, but it... Yeah, you sort of have to zoom in to see the wheels under it are the new wheels. Yeah, I mean, I, one criticism I have of the uh, the aero caps, which are good for efficiency, but it's a shame that they don't go all the way out to the rims. So, you know, there's still a chance of rim rash, uh, which is why I always try to buy aftermarket caps for uh, real drive model Y model 3s, just so it's cheaper to buy a replacement cap than it is to repair each time. So, yeah, anyway, that's just a small criticism of, of otherwise a quite a nice car. Um, and... The 19-inch wheels are now called Nova wheels. So that's probably what you can see in the carrier there. Yeah, Riz, I think likely these are going to be the showroom cars. I think the Model Y was the same in Australia. Uh, the showroom cars came out first before deliveries, of course. Cool. All right. Um, let's say hello to some of our regular guests and viewers who have joined us this morning. 69 viewers at uh, 8.05 a.m. on Saturday morning. Thanks so much for joining us. We have Tassie Thalassain watching us from the South Island of uh, yeah Australia, which is uh, <laughs> Tasmania, of course. Thanks for joining us. SWS from Beeth in Queensland. And ooh, look at this, Melbourne, 26 degrees overnight, 27 now with a max of 25. That is a pretty good weather, Riz. Yeah, it's like living in the Bahamas. It's, uh, <laughs> it's, it's that good out here. It's, it's a bit windy, but having said that, it is warming up. Good. Uh, I think it's warm here in Sydney as well today, so... Warm across the East Coast, which is great. Gaffer's joining us from Nashville, which is Wollongong, of course. Hello, uh, Gaffer. Nice to see you. Uh, and it's uh, a bit cooler in Adelaide, I think, Jerry is telling us this morning. Uh, watching with COVID. Hope you feel better soon. Uh, and Gene says hello. And Graham's watching us from Shepparton, as always. And John's from Brisbane. Robin Jules, hello there. For watching from Brisbane. And Simon's watching from Tenterfield. And yes, Abby's also watching from Melbourne. Hello there. Uh, yeah, John's saying Melbourne is the only place that can cool down when the sun comes up. Yes, four seasons in one day, isn't it, Melbourne? 
Uh, Dave's watching from Brisbane. Rachel's watching from Toowoomba. Hello there. Nice of you to join us. And Bulldog says hello. Uh, yeah, Chris Crichton says, awesome. Finally, I can catch... Uh, I caught the live on the Saturday morning. Sending much appreciation from Logan City, Queensland. Hey. And I just want to say thank you to everyone not watching from Sydney because I know what time zones you're in. Brisbane's an hour behind. Perth is three hours behind, which Riz joined us from last week. So, yeah, appreciate anyone watching um, outside of Sydney. Of course, our Sydney siders as well and Melbourne viewers who are watching at the local time zone of, of uh, 8 a.m. this morning. Uh, Jasper's watching from the NT as well. Much appreciation. Thank you. Oh, Jeremy's got a joke for us, Riz, this morning. What sorts of charge do evil like and discharge? Their favorite is a positive charge. They don't mind a negative charge. They dislike a bank charge and they really dislike a criminal charge. Oh, love it. <laughs> Very good. Uh, Kevin's watching from Bunyanyong in Victoria. Oh, sorry to hear this, Robert. Uh, watching from Melbourne. Ottawa was written off last weekend while parked. Oh, that, that's no good. Uh, good news, Tesla has inventory and new car coming on Saturday. Okay, very good. Uh, Wayne saying hello. Uh, actually, Wayne, I believe if Wayne doesn't mind me saying, he's got a picture of an Atto 3 there as his profile pic, so he won't mind me saying that he shared this pic with me this week of... Uh, the two red Atto 3 spotted in Toowoomba in Queensland, uh, EV Network's North Point Shopping Centre. So the car on the left uh, is actually the first red Atto 3 ever delivered in Australia. Uh, it's a lady that he met up or he met uh, at this charger. And his car is on the right here. This is the first red Atto 3 delivered in Toowoomba. Uh, and this is his photograph here. So thanks, Wayne, for sharing that. And uh, much appreciation to uh, viewers who've uh, shared pictures with me this week to post online. So keep them coming. Uh, any interesting photos you might spot of your adventures on an EV in Australia. Hey, Chris, nice of you to join us. Uh, watching from Camden, our good friends, Chris Riz. Um, and we have, uh, yeah, Gene says, well, your seal will arrive here well before New Zealand. Well, Riz, yes, that's, that's true. Right. I mean, they said December. We'll see. Have you heard anything at all from BYD? Well, nothing more, Tom. You're a customer. I'm just an observer. <laughs> so, no, I think it should be December for the first couple to be popping in. Yes, yes, we'll see what happens. I'm hoping it'll be before Christmas. That's what they're telling me anyway, as a customer. Dazzy Thalassan says, I was talking to a friend last night who was thinking of buying the BYD Dolphin, and she heard a story in the ABC that China is collecting data from the purchase and is concerned about identity theft. Mm, okay, well, that's that's a reasonable uh, concern, I guess. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't know. If you want to know where I go shopping and uh, drop the kids off for their activities, sure, that's that's an issue, I guess. But I guess the bigger concern is, uh, yeah, all your all your sort of pro, uh, identity details, like date of birth and driver license details, all the stuff that can be stolen. I mean, that's not just a BYD issue. That could be an issue for many. Anybody collects our data these days. Everybody's asking for your details from the local coffee shop all the way out to Tesla. Yeah, and I think Optus does it best. Uh, they, they take it and then they hand it out to whoever wants it. And so does Mark Zuckerberg. <laughs> uh, they take our data and just do whatever they want with it. Um, no, I, I think it is a genuine concern that there is. Uh, we have to be wary of the fact that, you know, vehicles and everything else collects data and information, how personal it is what they can actually do with it i mean we we have cameras everywhere a lot of them are from brands that do come from china we have no qualms installing them and because it is public safety so information has been collected and i you know i, I guess it's a risk we 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 have to take mm. i mean what can you really do in this digital age like everybody wants your your details to some degree, right? For, uh, you know, they claim it is for security purposes and identification, but on the other side, yes, cybersecurity is an issue, of course. So I don't know, maybe we should get a cybersecurity expert on to uh, to give us the lowdown on that. That'd be good. Uh, oh, Jasper has a question for you, Hollywood Riz. I mentioned something a couple of times on Wednesday that went unanswered. Could there be a media embargo? May I ask you this then? Will you be in a suburb later today, Mulgrave, Victoria? Now, Jasper, I do apologize. I missed it during the stream, but just as we were clocking off, I did reply. I think um, I am planning on being there, um, and I don't believe there's a media embargo of any sort. Um, but it would be great if there's a Model 3 Harlan there, but, I mean, I guess we'll find out. Um, there is obviously, given we've seen what's happening in New Zealand, 
there's probably a likely chance that in the coming weeks or a month or so, there may be some sort of a showroom reveal here in Australia. Because we've seen it in Singapore, UK, a fair few right-hand drive markets like Hong Kong. So it's only a matter of time when it happens here, but there's no embargo that I'm aware of. Yeah, that's right. I, I think there's enough spies in our network, Riz, uh, Ludicrous Feed Network, to send us some photos. Otherwise, Riz has got some running shoes that he's uh, able to uh, run around and get some pics for us. We'll see. Uh, but I wouldn't be surprised if there was a carrier on our highway here, one of our highways uh, carrying some new Model 3. So this is a shout out to everyone watching today. Uh, if you see something, you know, snap it and send it to me or Riz, and we will definitely post about it. So stay tuned, everyone. But no media embargo for this event check it out mulgrave today 11th november uh i guess you get to find out more about tesla and ask some questions so cool uh let's keep going with the welcomes this morning we have um uh tazzy ev1 hello tazzy ev1 nice of you to join us and oh philip picking up his new model y in brisbane today pumped as i'd be as well congratulations hope you have a great day and uh yeah show us or send us some pics i guess uh yeah that'd be great great to see Hello, Richard, joining us from Saduna today in South Australia on his big trip. I've got uh, a pic of Richard, actually. Here we go. Um, not Richard, but a pic of him showcasing this uh, this biofuel charger uh, in Kai Saiguna, Saiguna WA. Does a nice little walk around here. Running off uh, biofuels, uh, I guess, grease and oil and all that stuff. It's pretty cool. Cooking oil, waste cooking oil. This is what this charger is powered by. That's amazing, isn't it? Yes, nice alternative fuels. Thanks, Richard, for sending that. Uh, and Price YT here in North Europe yesterday for HOU. For who? For you. Okay, for us. Okay. Yeah, nice of you to join us there from Northern Europe. Uh, Han Solo says, my wife and I went to BYD showroom and Tesla stores and we finally made our decision. Excellent. We ordered our Tesla Model 3 2024 model, estimated arrival end of January, excited for our first EV. Congratulations, Han Solo. May the force be with you. And uh, yeah, I'm sure you're looking forward to that delivery. Uh, we have Scott watching from Maitland. Hello. And uh, Sanvi watching from Melbourne as well. And Blue says, hello. Hello back um and regarding the tesla uh, sorry byd information uh to china abby says that's concerning you're true as long as they don't collect pi rest of the information i think is fine as meta amazon has all details of us from number of kids to which type will we use yeah it's it's true i think amazon knows more about me than i know about myself which is which is sad but it's true manuel's watching from local in linfield in new south wales hello there um yeah tazzy i agree with you anything and anyone can get hacked as we saw earlier this year and the servers can always drop out uh optus style as well uh abby says but optus requires an outage when handing out your personal information <laughs> 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 uh good question here regarding the stalk okay so david asks what's the thoughts on tesla's removal of stalks on model 3 and consumer acceptance Riz, what have you heard around the traps with uh what people think of the stalk removal so there's reviews starting to come out of Europe of people taking deliveries, and it takes a little bit of time to get used to, uh, but overall people are pretty happy. The implementation of what Tesla's done on the steering wheel now with those uh, buttons and haptic sort of feedback that they get, it's it's quite good. Um, so I guess it's like anything new, it takes a bit of time to get used to it. There may be certain parts of our roads that you know may require a bit more getting used to compared to what happens in Europe, but there's a lot of uh, good things. Um, so with, with the stalks, you have to, to activate autopilot, you have to double tap. Um, now there's one single button. So it's less distracting to activate those type of things without the stalks now. Uh, so it's just an improved version of what it is, but I guess everyone will take a bit of time to get used to it. Yeah, that's right. I think one of the edge cases will be exiting a roundabout. That's probably the one scenario where I can see it might be an issue. But otherwise, I think it's probably like the center screen is where um, you know, it just takes some time to get used to the fact there's only one screen in the middle um, rather than having a, a cluster or a binnacle in the center of your steering wheel as well. So yeah, looking forward to, of course, just driving to get, to get uh, my own opinion. Uh, Gene makes a good point here. You don't buy the BYD directly from Tesla, uh, from China. I keep saying Tesla, uh, but from EV Direct. The SIM is Telstra. So, yeah, good point. 
And most phones are built in China as well. So the device I'm watching from, the phone I'm calling you from is built in China as well. So, you know, what can you do? Uh, and uh, yeah, Blue Tesla says uh, they'll be attending the event in Mulgrave today. Excellent. Go check that out, everyone. And Jason's watching from sunny Wollongong, aka Nashville. We have made our first dip into the EV world with a purchase of uh, Highland Model 3 rear drive. Any advice on some EV specific car loans? Love the feeds with Riz and Rahul. Yes, agreed. Um, yeah, we don't, uh, you know, we don't give our financial advice officially here. I suppose interest rates are high. So, yes, do shop around. And um, yeah, personal loans are not cheap at the moment, unfortunately, just the way it is. Yeah, there was an offer, I think, from Combank a couple of months ago, and it was making sort of a um, bit of media news around uh, doing some sort of a partnership, I think, with Tesla directly. Hmm. So it might be worth Googling and seeing what that was about, whether it's even active or not. So if that's going directly through Tesla, then, uh, you know, maybe it could be specific to EVs, but just worth doing your research. Hmm. Hey, speaking of Nashville, Riz, I just want to uh, put up Nash's uh, X here this morning. Uh, <clears throat> he is one of those people who will be upgrading his uh, 75D 2018 Model X vehicle, known as Superman, as you can see there, uh, to a 90D battery from uh, Tesla Australia, which is, uh, I think that, were, that was an offer recently and still on, ongoing. <clears throat> we'll find out from uh, Nash how much he pays for this. He's got a service here on the 17th of November. 2023, so about a week away. So maybe we'll get an update from him very shortly. Um, so yeah, I think uh, Riz. I think I don't know. I, I'm thinking maybe 20 grand, 15 to 20 grand for an upgrade. From memory, I think it was mid 20s, so sort of 25 ish. But obviously, Nash has connections. <laughs> so you know, when we get the invoice, it might actually say Elon discount code applied <laughs> to that. So it'd be nothing. So we, we we'll find out when when the main man shares that with us. Surely Nash has got one of those coffee cards where you you know you punch a hole for every Tesla you buy. He must be up to his you know seventieth one now, right? Sixty ninth. You get the seventieth battery free. Surely. Well, that's it. <laughs> Thanks, Nash, for sharing that. We'll uh, we'll touch base with him uh, later this uh, yeah later this month to see how he went with that, and I'm sure he will release a video as well on his YouTube channel. Uh, let's take some more comments. Um, yeah, for your information, Paul says Tesla are replacing the front speaker grill. Apparently, the original one was prone to warping in the heat. Okay, that's good to know. Uh, Abby says Riz does not drive, he runs. So, yeah, correct. He needs that Just sponsor. The way it goes. Uh, Tesla EV1 is waiting for the Kona EV launch, as am I. Hyundai Australia are saying nothing, not even a date for a launch. They did tell me quarter four, and we are well into quarter four now. So, I reckon if it doesn't happen soon, might be. Uh, might be for next year, Riz. We'll see. Well, yeah, anything's possible. Uh, this month. You're saying this month? Okay. Riz has spoken. He has spoken. The Oracle has spoken. Okay. <laughs> oh, Jez, nice of you to join us. Uh, yeah, that's okay. You sleep in for us, no problem. No, just kidding. Thanks for getting up early for us. <laughs> uh, yeah, Billy Lid says, if you can get an Nevada lease, massive tax savings, as we've shown in the past on our videos. Thank you. Uh, oh, Ben. Yeah, thanks, Ben. Ben did call me this week. He says, hi from the Gold Coast. When I was talking to Tom last week, my mod, uh, my mod, in my Model X, my kid said, hey, wasn't that Tesla, Tom? He's famous. I said, yes, but not Royal Rolls Riz. Hey, that's a nice one. Ugh. Correct. Look, might as well call me Spectre uh, because that's, that's what it is, Rolls Royce Spectre. No, I think, uh, look, Tom, you are famous and every show I attend, everywhere I go, one of the, the top questions that gets asked is, is Tom here? Ah, and, nice. you know what I'm saying? I just, I just refer him to the channel. I said, he's live there. He does hop about. He can be here in Melbourne or anywhere else at any given time. So check him out <laughs> on the channel. No, not famous, Riz. Just happy to be here and, uh, yeah, doing what I can, as you are, Riz, too, and Rahul, too. So, no, I'm surrounded by celebrities. I've got Hollywood Riz. I've got Tokoshi Rahul every Wednesday. Uh, I'm very, very blessed. Uh, hashtag blessed. But uh, thanks, Ben, for the shout out. Uh, and uh, yeah, I think, uh, yeah, no, it's, it's always fun having you guys on uh, and viewers as well. So appreciate that. Um, okay, Scott says, uh, I have three phase charging at home. Which third party home charging system would you recommend as we are in the process of purchasing a Polestar 2 long range single motor? Scott, you have just asked a very good question. I might as well shout out to our sponsors today. Uh, Car Loop, Wallbox, and EV. I highly recommend Wallbox. 
Uh, they are a very good product. They've got this uh, power consumption meter, which allows you to gauge how much solar production you are currently currently doing. And any excess can be pumped back into your car. So that's a very good feature. And I do highly recommend checking out Wallbox, particularly the Pulsar Max product, which I have right now. That's what it is behind me. And there's a discount code as well in the video description below. So thanks, Scott, for that good question. Uh, and yep. Okay, so let's keep going with some comments real quick. Um, okay, so Richard says, I think Bank Australia still does discount EV loans. Worth a look. Okay, cool. Okay, Graham just said he tested his BYD at the Tesla Superchargers in Shepparton yesterday. My Tesla app told me that it can't find my car and more word from BYD and Tesla about this issue. I don't think so, Riz, unfortunately. And that's that. like, you know, I'm out there trying to figure it out myself. Tesla, I don't know who to talk to at, the, at Tesla charging. It'd be great to have a contact um, because I think it's a Tesla issue. You know, BYD might be blocking it, but we heard on the Wednesday stream, I think, that someone's tested the Dolphin. Apparently, it's working. I'm trying to get a hold on one, of one myself to test it. Um, so, yeah, uh, next time I meet the BYD people, I'll try and get it escalated because it's not changing. And it's a global issue. It's not just uh, Australia-wide. Beyond Ireland's try to test it in um, Europe as well, and he gets the same issue. So we'll need to escalate and follow it up. Yeah, that's right, Riz. Uh, if I can get my contact um, next time I see them, I will ask them for sure about this. So yeah, stay tuned, everyone, and keep testing too for us. Uh, we want to get the, down to the bottom of this because the seal deliveries are coming. Dolphins being rolled out. There are more BYDs on the road. It's an important issue for road tripping for sure. Uh, good suggestion, Tazzy EV1. Where do the batteries in Australia go as most of the recycling of these cars is overseas? Yeah, I'd like to get someone from locally to address this issue because, yeah, I mean, it's an important question that comes up when someone asks me about EVs. I'm sure it does for you guys too. What happens with the batteries that are discarded? Um, I've seen videos overseas where up to 99% of the battery components can be reused again. So it'd be good to have someone local doing this as well. Uh, oh, good question here from uh, Richard Sierra is, uh, people have been saying the odometer in Tesla wasn't correct. Is a lot higher than actually shown. Do you, do you notice that? Um, how are we supposed to know? I haven't done any tests myself. It's like 20 to 30% more than what it should be. Hmm. Oh, it's quite That's interesting. Concerning if it is true. Yeah, I thought, I thought legally they're, you know, they're supposed to show, but you can imagine how things would blow up. If it is a Tesla and it's doing anything that's unusual that a Toyota may or may not do. Um, so yeah, I'll have to we'll have to look into it. I suppose one way to test it would be to get an independent GPS or something in your car and see whether it clocks up the same amount of mileage. Yeah, don't know. Uh if anyone's experienced this, uh let us know. Um SWS, I can assure you I am real. Uh I've shaken Riz's hand, and if you think Riz is real, then I must be real. <laughs> So unless we're both AI generated, I mean, <laughs> how else can I prove this to you? Um, uh, and all right, so November is the launch apparently. So there you go, confirmation yeah. Riz for the Kona. Uh, Bulldog says the extra screen in the rear of the new Model Three has to be one of the best additions to the Model Three. Keeps the kids entertained. Yeah, with young children, that's true. Although these days, kids have got their own devices they can look at as well in the car. So I don't know, is it that much of an improvement? These days, I suppose really young children, maybe. Yeah. Like think. Yep. Uh, Riz is serious. We go out to a restaurant for a regular feed and we get that question from the waitress. Well, that's it. It's Tom here. And <laughs> so, Tom, you're a ladies' man. They're looking for you. Oh, dear. That's funny. Um, no, I'm definitely real. And no, I'm not that famous. But thank you anyway. It's very, very flattering of you. But uh, just doing what we can here. Riz, that, that quote's following you everywhere. Riz, almost as good as a Mercedes actor from the BYD stream. And you stand oh, by that, right? I, I stand by 100%. Nice. Actually, anyone that's interested, have a look at uh, Monroe Live's latest video. They have an EQE SUV that they are doing an interior review on and the quality of materials and the rest. And they're not impressed. They're saying this is 106000 US dollars and the materials in here don't even feel as good as a $60,000 Cadillac. Ooh. So this is the, that's the conundrum. So I, I do stand by it. 
Having said that, in a couple of weeks' time, I'll have the BMW i5. So if Tom's hopping down, then, you know, luxury show for pickup from the airport in an i5. Um, I have high hopes for that car because growing up, I was a big fan of the 5 Series uh, before EVs, of course. And it would be really interesting to see what BMW has actually done with it. Mm. Well, if you're offering reason, maybe I will come get uh, picked up from you from the airport. Uh, and have Always you driven? Offering, Tom. Okay. All right. You're on. Uh, and Rachel says, oh, well, maybe I should test my dolphin at the superchargers here in Toowoomba. Yes, please. And let the lot of feeders know. Lot of feeders. That's a good name for us. <laughs> A lot of feeders. I like it. Okay, yeah, please, please do. Um, and I actually want to, speaking of the dolphin, just share this one. Uh, this is Carol and Chris in Perth, WA, uh, sharing their delivery pics of their new BYD Dolphin Dynamic this week. So the feedback I got from uh, Chris was plenty of power for both city and highway. Handling is good, but the stock tires on the Dynamic, which is the base variant, is quite noisy. Um, and the child detection feature is quite good. The lights flash and they horn honks if the child is left in there. Um, and then the air conditioning comes on, which is fantastic, particularly in, on hot days. If you, you know, it, leaving children in the car is obviously a, a huge safety issue. Uh, it's good that vehicles are now having this feature. One thing that he was concerned about was that the app wasn't linked to the vehicle straight away. Uh, BYD informed them it would take seven days for that to happen, which I got to say is, is a bit disappointing coming from, you know, a vehicle like Tesla, where as soon as you get the car, it's linked straight away. Riz, have you heard anything else from other people taking deliveries of BYDs? Is, is this a world like a, a systemic issue? Uh, well, I'm not. I'm not sure. Actually, it should be with the car when it comes. But obviously, I had the chance of meeting Chris last week in Perth, and uh, yeah, it's he he shared the same sort of concern with me later on that there it's not linking for a week or so. So hopefully, it's you know next week will be over a week, and it does work. Would obviously be interested to see for the functionality of what the app allows you to do. So yeah, looking great. I know, it looks fantastic. And um, and Carol won't mind me sh uh, sharing this, that uh, apparently she dyed her hair to match the color as well and looks fantastic. <laughs> uh, matches a cardigan too. And look at these little gifts that I, I, I think BYD would have given this to them, a little koala and a box of something, maybe some uh, dinosaur eggs, I don't know, but it looks good. Um, nice to have that, you know, that customer experience. Uh, I know Tesla's very minimalistic with the delivery. It's like, here you go. There's the car. Thanks. But I don't know. Maybe BYD is going the other way and, and making you feel extra special when you take delivery of a vehicle. Old school. It is. And the, and the team out in WA have been like, I met them at the uh, EVA Expo last week. They were really, really helpful um, in showcasing cars to customers. So I'm sure in their showrooms, they're very customer focused as well. So it is, it is a good thing because a lot of people do want that special feeling when they pick the car up and not just point at the car, there it is. If you have any questions, let us know, otherwise drive out. That's yeah. the usual Tesla experience. Yeah, that's right. I mean, if you're a regular customer like Nash, you know, it's no problem. Just pick up your 70th Tesla. But for a first time, we're like, we're kind of used to that special experience from a dealership where you walk in, they've got a big bow on the car, they give you I don't know, an umbrella or something, just, just to make you feel good, right? Because we're not robots, uh, at least most of us aren't. We kind of want a bit of love and attention. So I, I think a BYD is doing a good thing. Uh, offering a few small gifts, not going to cost them much. Just make you feel good about buying a new car, right? Yeah. Because apart from a house, a car is a huge purchase. You know, it's it's a big, it's probably the second biggest purchase for most people. So, congrats again to Carol and Chris for taking delivery. Looking very happy there. Let's um let's let's move on to uh, this story here, which is the Kia EV9, which has been released this week, oh. or at least the pricing has as well. So let's. Uh, share this uh, brochure here, um, if I can get this right. Um, so three variants. Uh, we've got, one sec, everyone. We've got uh, model year 2024. Apologies. I'll get this uh, very soon up for you guys. Uh... Sorry, everyone. One second. There we go. Okay. So this is the Kia EV9. Nope, haven't got that right yet. <laughs> uh, what have you heard about it, Riz, so far? Um, basically, that it's it's big, it's bold, and it's expensive. So it, I mean, you wouldn't expect it to be much cheaper than uh, some of the larger SUVs that they do have, but it's it's expensive, and yeah, maybe there is an entry level version later on that sort of comes under. 
the luxury car tax threshold, but it's uh, I can't imagine them selling too many just because of the price. Yeah, I mean, I'll start off by saying it's a it's a beautiful looking car. Like I've seen this a couple of times in person now at a couple of motor shows, and it, like he has done amazing things with their styling. They've come a long way. Um, it's a car that I would be happy driving. Like the price aside, this is a beautiful car. Like for the road, uh, one I'd be happy to go road tripping with, uh, with fa with family in the third row. Um, and yeah, very roomy inside, eGMP platform, which is very user friendly as we know. But yes, the price is certainly an issue, isn't it? Uh, let's scroll down here to the some of the specs. So we've got rear-wheel drive, got all-wheel drive dual motor, and then the all-wheel drive comes in two variants, the Earth all-wheel drive and the GT line uh, all-wheel drive as well. The main differentials being the, the powertrain, of course. Rear-wheel drive is 160 kilowatts, uh, 350 newton meters of torque, whereas the dual motor is almost double that, uh, 700 newton meters of torque. And the acceleration, of course, matches that too. So the fastest... GT line is 5.3 seconds, which is stupidly quick for a vehicle so heavy and so big uh, in the spec. And uh, there's the battery powertrain. So both lithium-ion, probably NMC, RIS, or NCA. 99.8 um, kilowatt hours. That's a huge battery. And offering, I think, WLTP range of uh, 400, I think it was, from memory. Oh, yeah. Yeah, let's have a look at some of the pricing. So the... The Air, which is the base variant, is asking $107,000 drive away. The Earth, uh, which is this one here, is asking $119,000 drive away. And the GT line is $139,000 drive away. Uh, of course, very between states. So that's that's a lot of money for, uh, for a Kia. I, I guess it's interesting, right? Like Polestar, obviously, has been going around with their showcasing the Polestar 3, which has 111 kilowatt hours of battery pack. Starts at around 131,000 plus on road, so more like 145. Um, that's not a seven seater. So, yeah, there is some value in the EV9. What I am excited about is it sort of carves the path for the EV5, which looks very similar but much smaller to sort of the, you know, the Ionic 5 equivalent. So I think that, that that car would be good if they can use some of the technology they've developed for the EV9 in there. Um, as long as it's priced sort of around, you know, 50 to 60 grand and not 110 onwards. But it is it is a unique car. And if you can hire this for, let's say, road trips up or down the coast of WA, <laughs> you hire from the airport and, you know, you pay whatever it is, 300, 400 bucks a day. Um, it would be an amazing car to be able to do that, and especially after uh, a lot of the charging infrastructure worries sort of go away in the coming months and years. Yeah, I mean, you've touched on an important point, Riz. Uh, you know, as we know, non-Tesla DC charging network is not up to scratch yet in Australia, and, you know, road tripping is definitely an issue at the moment, uh, particularly if you can't access the, charging, uh, the Tesla charging network. As you said, Riz, this is a great car for hiring for a week or two to go road tripping rather than having it every day of your life. Um, it, it could present an opportunity for sort of a premium rental market where someone's happy to pay this for a more comfortable ride with, uh, with the in-laws in the back. So, yeah, we'll see. We'll see how many they actually sell. And, of course, Riz will always, always keep us up to date with, uh, with facts from VFAX over the coming months to years. Um, I'll just update on the uh, range as well. So it's... Um, so the Air, which is the base model, 76.1 kilowatt hours will get you WLTP range of 443 kilometers. The 99.8 kilowatt hour battery is uh, 512 and 505 kilometers uh, WLTP respectively. I mean, let's let's have a look at some of the other pricings. So like the Kia Carnival, which is a very similar car. It's actually, I think, maybe 10 centimeters longer. So not much bigger than this car. Uh, in fact, it's a bit lower to the ground too. It's asking, I think, about 60 to 80 grand, depending on the specs, I think. And then the Kia Sorento is a bit cheaper as well. That's a smaller car, I know, but that's also a seven-seater. Yeah. So to, to ask $50,000 more for this, I mean, it, it's going to appeal to a, a lot less people, unfortunately. Yeah, a, a top trim Mazda CX-9 is close to 80 grand these days. So... You know, I, I guess the entry level here is about 30 grand more. So it, it, it would be interesting to see what, how many they do sell, particularly for, and, and where do they sell them? Which states sort of get 
a fair few of them compared to others. And, you know, maybe people will put them on platforms like Turo uh, for people to be able to hire. But, yeah, I, I guess we'll, we'll sort of find out. Do we know when the first deliveries are? Mm, don't know. Has anybody in the chat ordered one? Be good to know. <laughs> Uh, but you're right, Riz, uh, something like Turo or EV, our sponsors, uh, you know, if there's someone putting on the platform, then yeah, we're happy to <clears throat> check it out for sure. Um, uh, and sorry, Riz, go on. Yeah, so ju just with the EV5, I guess, when when that sort of vehicle starts to uh, make its way to Australia, I think that will sell quite well. Um, and obviously, you know, you've got the Kia e Nero, you've got Hyundai's equivalent with the Kona Electric as well. So there's they're trying to place cars in all different price points, which is good to see. So for those that want an entry level car, can sort of get one about fifty to sixty grand, and those that want, you know, very specific purpose. I guess we don't have really many seven seaters in the market to begin with. Mm. So I guess it wins by default there. This is true. And and the Tesla Model X, when it was available here, that was a seven-seater configuration, right? And that was asking like 150K plus like five years yeah. ago. So it's not unheard of that, you know, an EV is this expensive. And I guess obviously Kia has done its research. There is a market there for people who want this. And I know it's a Kia. It's, it's come from sort of budget beginnings, but it's a different brand, I feel, in 2023. It's a bit more premium. Uh, and if you want a bit more budget, then obviously there are the Chinese brands. But I don't know. I think the Koreans have... Rebadged, rebadged, and rebranded themselves a bit more to appeal to a more premium market. So I'm very curious to see what what numbers they sell for sure. I'm just going to quote uh, TechAU's uh, X here. So he's got some. Uh, Jason's got some service plan costs as well. So this will be of interest. Um, and the servicing is actually fairly comparable to their other vehicles too. So the Nero EV is asking one nine nine seven after seven years. And the EV9 is exactly the same, actually. Um, probably less than the uh, EV6s too. So, you know, at least uh, Kia is looking after their customers and not ripping them off completely when it comes to servicing. So thank you, Jason from TechAU for sharing that. And just a quick summary of the differences in the specs there. So we kind of went through that, but that's a nice little screenshot. And I've no doubt that the, the features will be quite high end as well. The materials, the inclusions. Like you get digital side mirrors with the GT line, <clears throat> augmented reality head-up display, uh, 14 speaker Meridian sound system. So all the stuff I've seen in the um, EV6 uh, GT line and GT. So looking forward to testing it out. And as Richard, who is obviously on his uh, trip around WA in South Australia, uh, Tesla DC charging in WA north of Perth is actually almost non-existent. So Riz, as we've said many times, love to have this car driving from say Perth to to Broome or, you know, Exmouth one day, um, be a very luxurious ride. Well, the WA charging network is starting to come together. They reckon it'll be ready uh, from the bottom of the state all the way to the top by June next year. Um, and they're rolling it a lot, a lot quicker than I guess what uh, Richard's experience has been going, crossing the border into SA and RAA having not really done too much. Yeah, what's the deal with that? Why are they so slow? They were promised what two years ago, right now? Oh, it's it's getting it's getting there, and like there's no accountability. That's what I find a bit disappointing because there are people legitimately trying to cross across, and this comes to the same thing. We've got bloody eight countries in one country, and until this national rollout that NRMA is supposed to do uh, kicks off properly, and not just here's our one site in Mudgee, um we'll be waiting to see what happens. So we need a national approach to this. And if we have a state-by-state -state approach, then those states need to be held accountable for rolling out this charging infrastructure because every state has, um, you know, greenhouse gas emission reduction targets. And it's not happening if we don't provide the infrastructure to make it happen. Yep, absolutely right. Correct. I mean, let's be serious. Like, EV charging is like the number one issue at the moment and reliability too, so... That's what's going to make or break your uh, EV road trip experience. Speaking of NRMA, we are actually going to be doing a special stream, Riz and I, on Monday, uh, 8 p.m. AEDT, uh, Sydney, Melbourne time, with RACQ. Not NRMA, but uh, RACQ first, and then possibly NRMA. So come and join us on Monday night. Uh, we've got uh, Dr. Michael Kane, the head of policy from RACQ, uh, 
uh, chatting with us about what the RACQ are doing when it comes to EV charging in Queensland. So I'm very much looking forward to that event um, because, you know, we've always said, Riz and I, uh, we want to create a state of origin. We've got seven countries or eight countries <laughs> in Australia. Uh, we want each state to be doing their absolute best to look after us as EV consumers. So, yeah, don't miss that one-off event with Dr. Michael Kane. Uh, let's take some more comments from our audience. So Gene says it's normal to wait a few days for BYD to get the SIM activated. Thank you for confirming that. And he says uh, if 500 megabytes of data in the first month and then two gigabytes on uh, the first every subsequent month. Okay, well, that's good to know because if I take delivery of a seal, I oh, can't go nuts on Spotify uh, as I have been with Tesla. So interesting. I think for Tesla's got a fair use policy when it comes to data. Yeah. Ah, oh, Tazzy EV1 saying these must be mainland BYD dealers. Not sure I've seen anything get anyone get anything extra in Tazzy deliveries. Let's see if anyone else has said that. Um, Wayne Richardson says from Queensland, when I picked up my Atto 3, the gift box contained hand cream, hand sanitizer, and hand wash, all vegan and smells really good. Oh, that's nice, Wayne. See that that makes you feel good, right? As a as a new car owner, like, oh, that's nice. You know, you're still a number, but we're we're looking after you and making you feel special at least. Uh, Simon says, a lot of money for a Kia, referring to the Kia EV9. I think Simon's also a Kia EV6 owner. Yes, um, uh, but they are still popular. I agree. There's a few of them on the road, Riz. Yeah, definitely. I think, you know, the EV6 was pretty pretty good proposition, really helped Kia get into that luxury electric vehicle market. And people are bought into it. And, you know, there's very happy owners. Mm. Um, it is a good car. The EGMP cars are great cars. It's just, uh, I guess it's one of the first times we'll get to see such a large car over 100 grand from Kia. Uh, so when it does land, um, get one in Tom's hands. That's right. I have uh, requested one from Kia. So stay tuned, everyone. Probably early 2024 at this stage. Uh, hopefully during school holidays, we can still go for a long drive. Uh, Tazzy makes a good point. There are a lot of more blended families these days. That's true. Like the Brady Bunch with uh, stepchildren and stepmoms and stepdads around. So yeah, you know, that's that's when they're useful, of course. Uh, John says, I saw one yesterday being driven with uh, templates and stickers on. Fantastic. Uh, an update from Richard. Uh, Waduna, South Australia, opened yesterday between Seduna and Port Augusta. Fantastic. Cool. One for Riz. Bulldog says, uh, I was in Melbourne, uh, Phillip Island yesterday for the recent MotoGP, and the amount of Teslas in Phillip Island was unbelievable. Great to see such a small town with heaps of EVs. Yeah. There's a few charges as well um, in the center of town. I think near the transport hub there, Bulldogs. So, yeah, good. Yeah, they're picking they're picking up and they're installing more charges down in that that part of Gippsland as well. Um, it'd be ideal if Tesla opens a supercharger site down there. Just hinting, because people can then head down to uh, Wilson's Prom and other places as well. Um, or if they wanted to go to sort of Phillip Island, they could do that as well. So mm. yeah, it's a it, it, lot lot of Teslas, a lot of EVs. Um, regional towns get them whether the people are driving there for road trips or. A lot of people, they also have them themselves. So it's happening everywhere. It's not just the affluent parts of uh, Melbourne or Sydney. That's correct. We've got um, more segments segments of the market opening up to EVs, which is which is fantastic. Very happy. Um, okay, so Sid Jaguar says uh, EV9 is expensive. Let's hope the 12-volt issues are sorted. Does anyone know whether Kia is still using lead acetate 12-volt? Probably, right? I would think. Um, Tesla's got the lithium-ion 16-volt battery. I think every other manufacturer is still on 12-volt lead acid, so we'll find out. Yeah, man, you know, I think you're, you're not alone. Uh, my Tesla pickup experience, here are the keys. Flash the hazards if you need help. <laughs> I mean, that, I think that was during the COVID times, right? Uh, people were actually being called on the phone in the car, taking delivery. I mean, look, to be fair, sure, if you know what you're doing, Tesla are very happy for you to just go, but... I mean, there are, there are reps walking around on, in the warehouse in Sydney, at least I've seen. They're always happy to take questions. So it's not all impersonal. You can always ask, ask a question if you want. They're happy to spend as much time as you need with you. Jerry says the RAA South Australian EV charging rollout is not genuine. Only doing because they get government funding, still pondering, still pandering to ICE OEMs. And this is one of the questions we'll post to the RACQ head of policy, Dr. Michael Kane, on Monday night. I mean, how serious are these murdering bodies you know, we know NRMA is semi-serious. They've got this rollout. We've got, we know RACQ is serious. How serious is the RAA risk? I think you've had some dealings with them in the past. Yeah, and that's the thing. I mean, in the beginning, they were very keen and very serious of doing it. But 
the fact that it's a bit disappointing is there's no transparency. There's no rollout like timeline. There's no here are the sites that are coming up. They'll be open. We don't need like an exact date of opening. We just need, okay, in quarter one, 2024, we're going to have these DC sites go live. Mm-hmm. Right? That can't be that hard to give us a rough timeline to work with. But doing nothing and saying, well, actually, we can't, we can't tell you what's opening where. That's just, you know, that they've got government money to roll this out. The least they can do is tell the taxpayers, even people in South Australia, as to what's going on. And then everyone else will find out as well. But, yeah, it's, we, we need transparency. Yep. Yep. And we are calling you out, RIA. So you've been put on notice. Uh, be serious, please. And, you know, you're using government money, as, a pe- as people have said. So, you know, the best forum to tell people what's happening is here, right on Ludicrous Feed. We've got invested EV owners and potential EV customers who are interested in this industry. And if you just give us a weekly update, what's happening, we're happy to broadcast it for you, like twice a week even. Uh, we broadcast twice a week. So, you know, it's a free forum for you guys to, to show everyone what's happening. So watch out. Okay, so uh, Ben says, ironically, the EV9 has been priced at basically the same sale price I've listed in my 2019 Model X 75D for. Tesla has more power, autopilot, and efficiency, but has less range and warranty. Both great vehicles. Yep. Good point. And I'm 100% with Sid Jaguar here. Uh, time for EV, uh, sorry, time for Kia and Hyundai to invest in charging like Tesla. Uh, no point in relying on non-Tesla charging for this. That's the real issue for non-Teslas. I mean, Tesla got it right from day one. They knew charging would be an issue. That was what's going to make or break the EV experience. We do need these um, these OEMs to put some big boy pants on. Uh, Kia, Hyundai, BYD, Polestar, please start investing in the network, for goodness sake. I mean, you know, you can't just sit there and put your head in the sand and, and go, what charging problem, right? That is like 50% of the EV experience, charging, not just in the cities, but on the road trips. So please, stick your, take your finger out and uh, put some money back into Australia. Thank you very much. Gosh. Well, I heard this week that Mercedes in the US will be doing some sort of a charger rollout with Bucky's, one of those. I'm not sure whether it's like a supermarket or what sort of a chain, but they're pretty popular in the US. A fair few Tesla sites are already there at their stores. So, uh, yeah, like Mercedes and these guys, I mean, Mercedes rollout, given the number of vehicles they sell, is probably going to be non-existent here, but in the US it might make a dent. So, yeah, we need more OEMs to start investing, but I don't think they would. Hence, everyone's joining the Nax bandwagon. Yeah, correct. I mean, let's get serious, people. Come on, please. <laughs> um, oh, Robin Jules is saying, when we picked up our Atto 3 a few months ago, they had a jazz band and food, a group pickup. Uh, BYD known to... I mean, yeah, they do. They know how to have a good party. They know how to have a good time. Uh, BYD and MG throw great parties. So good experience there, Robin Jules. Thanks for sharing that. Uh, anyone know if you can swap out the lead acetate with lithium ion for the 12 volt Tassie EV1 asks for those that have constant issues? Yeah, I don't know. Not sure. Uh, and Riz, do you mean you want a government with a plan? <laughs> yeah. It's, I know it's too much to ask for, but really? we, we need something. <laughs> Clearly we do. We, have, we saw during the pandemic, right? Each state locking down, doing their own thing. So that's the state of play at the moment, unfortunately. Uh, here we go. So Toby says Tesla Brisbane were fantastic and we picked up the car in August. That's great to hear. Smooth, easy process. Love charging at home, 100%. We installed a 32 amp plug after watching your channel. Great. So fast to charge and affordable. That's great. I'm glad you learned something from the channel. Um, yes, and Tesla made their own charges, made their own tutorial videos to eliminate big showroom and fancy pickup experience, made an excellent app. Yep, absolutely. On the other side, they've made a great digital experience, 100%. For those who are happy to do that, that's what that's what it's for. So good to have that uh, as well. Um, suppose it might work with a lithium ion, but uh, they are more expensive anyway. For the small battery, most twelve volt batteries can be uh, resolved anyway. Yep. Thank you, Gene, for that. Okay, so um, I might actually just quickly run through some more um, videos and pictures. So let's. Speaking of deliveries, this is our good friend. Um, hopefully, Kangaroo Island doesn't mind me sharing this. I mean, it's quite obvious where this picture's from. Uh, this is him doing a lap of Kangaroo Island, 198 kilometers um, of the island, 16.4 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers efficiency, which is pretty good for that Polestar 2 long range single motor rear wheel drive 2024 variant. There it is there in uh, his beautiful car. 
and what a beautiful picture as well. So thank you very much, Kangaroo Island TV, for sharing that picture with us. Looks good. And uh, Greg has Greg a truck. Here we go. Picture of a cyber truck boat mode towing in the US. That's not a small boat. <laughs> yeah, that's such a big thing. That's cool. I, I think Scott Morrison was driving that one. Because <laughs> uh, apparently they can't tow a boat, so he had to go there to find out himself. <laughs> yeah, weekend ruin, unfortunately, for Scotty. Um, and just briefly back on the Cybertruck, we've got Cybertruck Dimensions leaked and a 14 to 50 outlet in the bed as well. Ooh. Cool. I guess deliveries are pretty soon, Riz, in a couple of weeks' time in the US. Yeah, November the 30th, I think they were saying. So we'll find out. There's a fair few being spotted that are built, ready to go. So mm. we'll see if it's actually customer deliveries or Tesla employees. But either way, these are getting out there now. Yep. Yeah, so if anyone understands uh, freedom measurements, uh, that's what they are in pounds and feet and inches and stuff. Um, and yeah, question for me, Tom, what model of the Warbox do you have? I have this one, uh, the Pulsar Max, which has the solar monitoring and allows me to uh, charge my EVs in the day with excess solar power. It's a great little product. Um, all right, so let's... Um, this is going to be fun. I'm going to share this video of uh, this incident actually from Queensland and uh, I'll let it roll for the next two minutes and we'll get some reactions very shortly. So here we go. Tonight we have extraordinary video of two senior citizens busted keying cars at a popular southeast shopping centre. They targeted luxury vehicles, not realising cameras were rolling the whole time. On a sunny afternoon at Brookside Shopping Centre, a senior citizen is up to no good. He keys a BMW first, then checks to see if anyone's watching. His next target, a Tesla. Police say this man is 70-year-old Raymond Edwards, who is there with a woman. She joins in too. In a Gucci T-shirt, she uses her hand to try and cover the key, but the unlikely vandal is caught by the car's cameras. They're just brutal. What do you think motivates, like, older people to do something like that? Jealousy. I'm very disappointed, very uh, unhappy that it happened. It looks like it was targeted at certain vehicles. A search on social media reveals Raymond loves fast and fancy vehicles. A racing car enthusiast pictured at major events in Newcastle and Bathurst, even rubbing shoulders with New Zealand racing star Fabian Coulthard. What's the point? What makes you want to key people's car? Brittany Ellis says her Hyundai was keyed on the same day at Brookside Shops too, but there is no evidence the attacks are connected. I was in the shops with my client, which she um, has a disability sticker, and I came out and my car was completely keyed. Seeing my car being keyed, it was devastating because I'm like, my baby. The Tesla owners who don't want to be identified are devastated too, telling Seven News they've been quoted almost $2,000 to fix the scratches. Raymond Edwards has been charged with two counts of willful damage and is due to face Brisbane Magistrates Court on December 11. The woman is yet to be charged, but if the pair is found responsible, they'll be banned from Brookside Shopping Centre. There's potential for ban, so if people do come back and who are banned, then obviously uh, they're considered being trespassers and police gets notified. Yeah. Proof, if you think no one's watching, you're probably wrong. Rachel Baxter, 7 News. Riz, I don't know. Like, I, my blood is boiling watching that. Um, I, I just cannot believe people will actually do that, right? I mean, to see, to see that they, they, these two cowards slash criminals—they're not the usual kind of person you would think would be doing this kind of stuff, right? You think normally it's like a someone who's really you know, angry and revved up, maybe someone in a rude or something that's scratching these cars. But to see two elderly people doing this—it's just shocking, really. Well. Clearly, they're um, you know they're they're trying to relive their teenage years um, because <laughs> it's it's a bit late for that. But uh, I mean, surely you would know what some of the cars that you're getting close to are like, and especially in the sentry mode, it actually you know lights up the screen and tells you. I, I just don't get it, but I you know a two grand that's a lot of money for most people, and you know I, I wonder if they're going to be charged to pay that money. I don't know. 
Gosh, I hope so. I mean, you know, they, they're criminals. That's what they are. I'm sorry. There's no way around it. Um, they've done the wrong thing. They've damaged someone else's property. They're, they're basically vandals. And I'm glad Channel 7 have actually publicly shamed them. And I'm so glad now we've got vehicles like Tesla with Sentry Cam that can capture this, not just for their own vehicle, but the BMW uh, opposite as well. So it's shocking, really. Like, who scratches a car? Like, it's, it's ridiculous. Like, what, what is going through? Not just one of them. There's obviously, they're complicit with each other doing this. Um, yes. Maybe this is the start. There's, there's a, you know, we hear stories of youth crime. This is elderly crime, <laughs> and maybe this is a trend they're starting. I'm not sure, but whatever it is, don't do it because you'll get locked up or banned from a shopping center, and you don't that's want right. to be banned from a shopping center. You do not. No, that's right. So yes, we are watching you on Tesla Century Cam. Don't even think about it. And uh, yeah, I mean that's why people park next to Teslas because it's probably the safest place to park. <laughs> Century Cam's rolling, right? Oh, sorry. I've got to calm down. That's, uh, that really annoys me watching that. Uh, yeah, people are just shocked in the chat there. Yep, Bulldogs, I agree. Stupidly unbelievable. Un unbelievable. Yep, and OMG from Tesla EV1. Um, <laughs> Manus says, if that an EV, you can't key with a key card. Well, <laughs> you probably could, but not as effective. So, yeah, no, it's, on a serious note, it's, it's shocking. Uh, Jer Jerry Can says, don't wait for government to act. Ludicrous fee community is the best way to ramp up pressure on charging providers. 100%. We'll keep you guys honest. Uh, and Gene says, yeah, no sentry mode on seal at the moment. That's true. That's very true. That's one uh, you know, one compromise I'm going to have to make. But I'm going to have to look into maybe some third-party dash cams uh, that can do that. I think it's probably worth the money seeing that. If it's $2,000 to repair a scratch, like there, there you go. If it happens once, you've already, you've already paid for it doing that. Um, Tazzy EV1 asks, could the owners sue them privately and make them pay for damages? I mean, they probably could, right? You're on private property doing that. Yep. And Gene says it's only 200 bucks for a third party dash cam. Yeah, correct. Yeah, it's, uh, it's disappointing, but what a downer. Um, we need to finish on something higher there, Riz. What have we got? Anything else exciting happening? <laughs> uh, let's have a look. Oh, you're on mute, Riz. I'm back. You're back. So uh, there is this, I, I guess, something a little bit different. Uh, I'll try and share this. Uh, apart from the fact that the name is a little bit funny of this vehicle, um, speaking about large, big electric cars, okay. the, the, yep. this, is, this is sort of what started to, first one rolls off the production line, the Yang Wang U8. BYD is luxury brand. Yes. Uh, it's it, it's rolling out now and people have no dramas paying um you know over a hundred thousand US dollars for these. Yeah, hundred hundred thousand US did you say? Yeah, hundred thousand US dollars plus. Okay. So it's... clearly the Kia EV9, you get some spare change if you buy this. Um yeah, over the EV9. Yeah, I mean, you know, uh, it kind of looks like an EV9, I guess, to some degree. Um, let's see if the interior is any any good. There's no pictures of the interior, but you'd expect a pretty luxurious experience for that kind of money. Oh, uh, that that's why they created a separate brand for it. Mm -hmm. um, what does that say? One hundred and fifty thousand US dollars. So that's two hundred thousand Aussie. <laughs> wow. So, you know, uh, Mercedes G-Wagons and whatever else were used to be, you know, the big Land Rover Discovery 4s with all the off-roading options. They've got nothing on this. So, Yang Wang's hitting the streets very shortly. Yeah, I wouldn't mind driving a Yang Wang, actually. Um, it's a cool name. <laughs> Yang Wang. Uh, a bit suspicious, but no, I mean, I'm sure it'll be rebadged or something else here. Um, Yang Wang U8... 150,000. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of cash. Cool. And, and it's, uh, well, hopefully BYD doesn't go with the traditional naming convention. Build your Wang won't go very well here. <laughs> so. Coming to a Wang near you. No, it's, uh, yeah. Cool. All right. Well, thanks, Riz. Uh, we'll look out for that vehicle uh, in some of the more affluent parts of uh, Australia, maybe one day. Um, yep. Somewhere in, uh, was it, what would you say, where West Dandenong's? Uh, Turak East is where Turak I'm East, at. I'm sorry. Basically Dandenong. So, okay. Yeah. okay, cool. 
Oh, uh, cool. Let's take some final comments and then we'll wrap up. Uh, and yeah, Gaffer says, the bad thing about the sentry mode, you can't park by yourself. You always find others around you. This is the way. And Bulldog says, the old bloke was a car enthusiast who will key expensive cars, make zero sense. I agree. That That's weird. Yeah. What a weird guy. I mean, why would you do that? Well, I know a lot of car enthusiasts that will just because they know how much effort goes into people buying these vehicles they wouldn't they would never do this mm-hmm. so maybe they're getting a thrill out of it in their 70s but um they're gonna get locked up as well so that's all part yeah. of it well uh, maybe not locked up but certainly yeah life ban hopefully from that shopping center um disappointing uh yeah unfortunate name bulldogs i agree um Oh, Matthew Dixon's got some intel, Riz. Uh, looks like the seals are birthing or landing 22nd of December into Australia. Ooh. That's pre-Christmas. Interesting. Yes. Tassie Tharson, instead of the Yang Wang, maybe the Wallaby Wagon. Yeah. I'm mean, BYD U8's a good name. U8's nice, you know. Um, yeah. <laughs> what do you drive a Yang what? Yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure whether it'll pass for muster here. That's okay. Um yeah, I mean, look, there's no guarantee, but video evidence goes a long way these days for sure. Uh, it's helped me with an insurance claim in the Model 3 in the past, so that's something I'll definitely consider if I get a seal, get one of those after-party dash cams for sure. Rightio, Riz, uh, that is the hour mark. So, yeah, I want to thank you once again for joining us, uh, as always, on a Saturday morning. Always great to have your knowledge and wisdom and company, of course. Uh, it's It's been awesome. Thanks, everyone, for sharing all of those unique insights and asking the right questions and let's put some pressure on getting more charges in the ground yeah 100 percent. and if you've got contacts in the industry ria and rma whatever rcq uh, all those uh, murdering bodies yeah put pressure on them and say look there is a channel and uh, a medium here that's very happy to always take updates so yeah please reach out to them and uh, happy to have them on the stream keep them accountable for sure uh, thanks for watching us live, everyone. Uh, on a Saturday morning, really appreciate you joining us uh, wherever you are on the East Coast, uh, a bit earlier on the you know, middle states and the West Coast as well, and anywhere else around the world. Much appreciate your viewership. And if you're watching replay, thank you so much. And on audio podcast as well. Uh, many thanks again to our sponsors, Carloop, Wallbox, and EV. Thank you so much. And we'll be back on Monday this week to talk to RSEQ and, of course, Wednesday to chat to Rahul, Koshi, uh, and Riz, as always, about all things EV. So thanks very much and have a great Saturday. We'll see you next week. Bye now. <laughs>